let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's go. Ooh. So today we are talking about Facebook and Instagram for realtors. And our guest speakers is Sophia Kripe and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I got that mixed up. My notes are backwards. <laughs> Sophia Myers, Sophia Myers and Sarah Kripe. So hey. <laughs> there you go. I don't think we can hear you, Sophia. Can you make some noise? Make sure we can hear you. Hey, I'm Sophia. <laughs> you awesome. So they have been specializing in social media with real estate agents for the past five years. And they have a background in design. They've worked with over a hundred agents, brokers, lenders, and teams. And they've even worked behind the scenes with like athletes and they worked at the taste of Colorado. For those of you that aren't familiar with that, the taste of Colorado is a, is a big event here in Colorado where I'm at too, which is kind of cool. And um, so they help manage that. Um, they've worked with James Van Pra. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Von Miller, who those of you who don't know is probably the most famous Bronco left on our team. <laughs> Scott Snap. And Smash Mouth, the band Smash Mouth, they are strong, driven Capricorns. And as you will see, they will laugh at anything you say. So welcome, Sophia and Sarah. Let's hear what you have to say. Well, hey, we are so excited to be here. Um, like Sean said, we've been working in the real estate marketing industry with real estate agents for the past five years. We know what you guys are looking for and um, where, where you're thinking you need to go, the questions you probably are going to be thinking of. Um, but yeah, if you have questions on anything, please pop it in the chat. We are here to assist you and help you kick butt, take names in social media real estate. <laughs> oh, we, sorry, Sarah, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we get started, we kind of want to just do an outline of what we're actually going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about social media philosophies, um, three strategy that build your audience and followers, build trust, all that good stuff, all the things social media was cut out to, to do for you and your business. Uh, we're going to show you a bunch of really cool examples. So you get a taste of kind of what we're talking about, not just us blabbering on. We're going to show you exactly what to do. Um, and then also how to still be you. Social media is about you. We're going to go into mass detail about that as well. Um, we're going to talk about farming 101. And that is so important. We do that with hashtags and a few other ways. Um, we talk about consistency. If there's one word you're going to hear a lot, it's going to be consistency. So um, get ready for that. Um, and then, of course, we're going to talk to you about joining Close Pro and all the amazing benefits you get from that at such a little cost. I kind of can't believe it. So <laughs> we're excited to partner with the Close on this and get started and rock your world with social media for real estate. <laughs> so, so one thing before we jump forward, um, in the chat is Becky posted a link to a worksheet. Now, if you're in front of a printer, you can print it out and then follow it along. If not, you can just follow the worksheet along and take, take your notes. It'll kind of help you keep your focus and keep track of the slides that you're on, those kind of things. So just click on that link. You're good to go. And even though we've, those worksheets are so nice too, because it's gonna to help kind of streamline our strategies and actionable steps that we can take away today to start having social media really work for you. That way, when you're on there, you're making the best use of your time. Um, so those worksheets are super phenomenal for those. And although we've gotten to work with lots of great people and do lots of great things, our favorite people are real estate agents because there's no one who is harder working than a real estate agent. I mean, honestly, right? And so the goal here is to kind of um, make things, as I said, really streamlined, very actionable. And, and probably the best way to start is to really understand social media by understanding its philosophies, right? So Sarah and I kind of play a joke at this saying that it's the love languages of social media, right? <laughs> because um, it's, it's how social media wants you to function with it. And when we understand the philosophies behind social media, it makes our game plan just that much easier because we're able to go into it knowing what it wants from us um, and how we can 
can participate better. So um, one of the big, thing, big things you're gonna hear us say both today and then of course in our four week course as well is gonna be community guidelines, okay? So when you go onto social media, both Facebook and Instagram, um, of course you do have rules, but really what they're called is community guidelines, right? I'm sure you guys have heard that before, community guidelines. And you're gonna hear me say community over and over and over again because the whole point of social media is to grow your community. It's to grow, um, the, to grow the community on the platform as well as your very own community. So you're gonna hear that a lot today. That's not just rules, it's community guidelines. Um, Sarah said, shared a little bit about this, um, but we want you to be exactly who you are, right? We're gonna show you lots of different examples today. Um, we're gonna go into lots of different things, but most importantly, this is about making it work for you. This isn't about um, you doing social media wrong or you've messed up or you've done anything incorrectly. This is about being exactly who you are and continuing to present that online so you can market yourself in the best way possible, right? So all these examples, make sure to, to keep it about you, right? Um, we're also going to share a lot about aesthetics, right? We want you to know that we're not materialistic. You know, we're not trying to have you get all the newest and latest things and take pictures perfectly and all those all those great things. We're going to talk a lot about aesthetics because it's super important uh, for your branding, but it's not just about materialistic things. Um, and through all of this, we're going to talk a lot about strategy and algorithm and all the different things around that. But if you're not having fun, then it's, you know, it's pointless to begin with, right? Real estate agents, you guys are already busy enough. You guys don't need to add more to your plate. So if you're not having fun with it, it's not meant for you. So just take what works and have a lot of fun with us today because that's that's what we're all about. All right, now we're going to kind of dig in here. So we're going to talk about your look matters and how to build a great social media presence and what you need to really touch on. So we're going to talk about three topics. Okay, when you are on social media, we need to have three topics. Obviously, one is real estate, right? But what are your other two? Do you only have real estate? You know, we work with hundreds of real estate agents and it is crazy the amount that only post about real estate. Uh, we're gonna talk to you what the pros and cons of that really are and um, go from there. Um, branding colors, branding colors, aesthetics, very important. You want, you want your audience to look at what you're doing and you wanna look professional. You wanna look like you have your poop in a group as we like to say. <laughs> <laughs> and why it's important to have consistency, there's that word, why it's important to have consistency for your colors, your fonts, all that other good stuff. I mean, you want people to think of you consciously and subconsciously. We'll go into that a little bit as well. And then are you clear? We're going to talk about captions and why those are important and how long and how short to make your captions. So let's move on. Let's get, let's dig in. So, um, All right. So this is what I love to talk about is your three topics. When we look at social media, we want to not just know that you're a real estate agent. Of course, that's very important. However, you need to look at two different things, two different topics that you're going to be posting about. There's many reasons for this. One, if you're only posting about real estate, it gets a lot, uh, people get bored with it, people get annoyed with it, things like that. Um, you know, we always say there is, and this is a, this is a big statistic, on social media, you should have the 20-80 rule. 20% about business, 80% fun and engaging things. Now, that's a lot. Look at your own social media. Are you only posting about real estate? Okay, so here's where those other two topics come in. And it's a lifesaver, you guys. It's, it's not like, oh, what real estate thing do I have to post about today? Okay, so other topics. Why is this important? When you're posting on social media and you're only posting one thing, you're only bringing, up, bringing in a specific audience, right? So if you pick two other topics that you like and that you will have fun with, that's a big key word, fun, fun, fun. Things that interest you, things that bring you joy. So let's say I'm a real estate agent, but you know what? I like drinking wine, okay? I like drinking wine, I like making wine, I like pouring wine. <laughs> So what I would do is talk about real estate and talk about different wines. What wine pairs good with what chocolate? Or hey, it was a crazy week in the real estate real estate industry. What glass of wine am I going to have at the end of the week? You know, so, so you can tie these things in together. Okay, third topic. I love hiking in the mountains with my dog. Oh, let's bring that in too. Uh, do you have that furry friend that you're bringing everywhere with you? Kind of like your assistant or just a big lazy dog? 
dog, <laughs> whatever you want to do. These are three different cool topics that you can post on and have fun with. So you're talking about real estate, you're talking about wine, and you're talking about hiking in the mountains with your dog or whatever it may be. I want you to really think about things that bring you joy. And they don't have to be traditional things like, I like wine and I like dogs. I mean, you can really go crazy with this. The reason we do this is your audience doesn't get bored. The second reason is if you're saying, oh, I love things about my dog, you're bringing in viewership and audiences from other people that like dogs as well, or other people that like wine as well. It's such an awesome thing. And then they're seeing your real estate posts as well. So you're bringing in three different audiences to share with. It is fantastic. So I really want you guys to think about what you like to do in your spare time. What, what brings you joy? Is it your family? A lot of agents post about their family, their kids, their spouse, um, what you do on the weekends. So really think about that. It's kind of fun. Sophia, do you have anything else to add on this? Oh, Sarah, you just shared that so perfectly. You know, this is just really a winning strategy because we also, when we start thinking about what makes us unique as an agent, right? We can think about a million different things about what makes us unique. And then people have no idea how to follow you or where they're going or what you're really about, right? So when you narrow it down to three, you just, you can really structure all your posts and what you have to do. If you're talking about your, your dog and posting and you're talking about wines and you're doing real estate, you know within those moments that you're taking pictures, that you're writing captions, that you're doing things on just those three topics. And it also makes it very manageable to continue posting. And I love what you shared about with the joy too. I mean, if you're not having fun with it, you're not going to want to keep sharing about it, right? So just, you know, kind of those fun things, whether that be family or, or wine. I love the wine. <laughs> you know, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, yes. I, I, I want to jump in. I, I think yes. you're exactly right. Like the challenge that I always have is like, what else do I post? Like we all have heard, don't just post real estate. And I don't know about you guys. I have a lot of real estate agents on my list, right? They drive me crazy. Yes. <laughs> so then what do I do is I don't post either. I don't post about me or anything interesting or about real estate. Cause I don't want to be annoying on one <laughs> end of it. And then on the other end, I don't want to, I don't know what else to post. So narrowing it to three things you know, like I think about my, my, my little doodle, right. My, my little gold, my golden doodle. I, I'd love to post stuff about her. You know, I enjoy doing stuff with my car or boating and then a little bit about real estate. And, um, it, it kind of helps me narrow my focus. So I, I like that. I, I like that strategy. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. If, and if you, if you never take two of those things and combine them into one, two, then you're even pulling in more audience on one post too. So let's say like, for instance, you love your dog, right? Maybe you have your dog come to a showing or you have your dog in the picture of the house that you just sold, something like that. Now you have all your dog followers and your retail and your real estate followers all joining in on that post as well to comment. Well, and like. I, I, I thought uh, Sarah already did that with the wine and real estate. Yes. Like, yes it's totally. automatic, yes. but it's not weekly wine. It just so oh. you know. Like it's like hourly daily know your audience. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know, another great thing about this is when you're bringing in people from other audiences, what this does is it's building trust, you know, with video, with posts, it's getting to know people are getting to know you. Do they like you? If they go on mine and they're going, oh gosh, she uses a lot of humor. She does this. She does that. I'm going to align with people that also find humor, like a big, big thing of who they want to work with. Um, if there's people that are like, Ugh, she doesn't seem as professional, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. Then they're not aligning with you. This is a great way to find people that you actually align with, have things in common. They're, this is marketing, trusting and gaining confidence. So people know and like you. That's the whole game. <laughs> so, so a common question is, is it, is minimum three? Is there a, is there a maximum like, what does that look like? Great question. You know, we do try to limit to three because we've had, we have worked with agents who have done five or even they do a, a theme of the day. So they'll do all seven, all seven days of the week, they have something, but it tends to be a, a true full-time job for them. You know, it tends to be so much work and so much effort. And it's also really hard for followers to do it too. If you, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, you're following a bunch of different accounts. And if you have no idea what to expect and what to get out of this account, you tend to lose trust within your audience. You tend to lose, lose that with it. So if you tend to stick to three, we, we find that to be a really winning solution because it's not overwhelming for you or for them. Thank you. 
Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is a great thing too, to go to your guys' worksheet to jot down a couple of ideas, write down a couple of notes in there too. Um, we're going to dive into a deeper look into, um, into branding and into captions, things like that as well. Um, within our four week course class, we're going to give you guys ideas of those three topics into more depth. We're going to go into how you can brand um, with the Close pro. You also get 30 days worth of edible social media posts, which is so <laughs> cool. I can't get over this. So even in that, we're going to go through how you can brand them for yourself and how you can um, caption them for yourself, things like that. Um, but we want to take kind of a quick look at what some of these examples look like, right? Because we can talk about these ideas all day, but until we see them in actionable items of other real estate agents also doing this, it can be hard to kind of see ourselves in those shoes, right? Um, so this is Sarah and I, we just love her account. We just love her account so much. She's so funny. She has serial laugher on here. So we know that we're obviously meant to be best friends with her, of course. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, but you can see with her branding that she has done some really unique um, and some really creative branding. We're going to go into, of course, highlights and stories and different things like that. But you'll see up here, she has a really easy profile to read, you know, exactly who she is right away. And then in her highlights up here, you see this beautiful blue teal color. And in every one of her posts, she has some way or some form of having blue teal in there. I'm going to give you tons of examples. So don't feel like you have to pick one or two specific colors for your branding. Don't, don't feel like you have to do that. Um, but what's really great about Sarah is you can see that. But I mean, if I, if I was scrolling on Instagram and I happen to see this blue color, I don't even need to read the caption or see who posted it. I immediately know it's her just because this is how she brands herself on social media, right? So she's just a prime, prime example of what this um, really looks like. Sarah, did you want to know on any of her profile as well? You know, if you take a look at her actual bio, she has Sarah Johnson, sar slightly sarcastic, hashtag realtor. She, it's very, it's very small. It's very condensed. You look at it and you know exactly. We need on social media, you want to get away from the whole thing of writing sentences about yourself. Like I have been in real estate for 1 million years. You know, it's, you need to, you need to make it pop. You need to make it fast and um, yeah, make it pleasing to the eye. And this definitely does that. I love it. Okay, as I said, we're going to share lots of different examples because you want to you want you want to start visioning yourself in this way, and we're going to go through all of these strategies in our four week course of how you can really specify this to your exact needs. These are just great, great examples. Of course, you have Tom over here who is just amazing in his highlights. You can see that beautiful uh, dark blue color, and then all the mm. way throughout his entire profile, you can see how he has that dark blue popping in and the whites and the grays. So it's all kind of strategic. It's also kind of looks like it's part of the same company, part of the same brand, um, and he also does a great job with his three topics as well. Obviously, he talks so much about business and strategy and marketing and things like that. Um, but then you also see a picture of him and his mom down here and a picture of him and his wife up here. So he's sharing a little bit more about his family. And another big thing that he does um, to not make it a third topic, but still really resonate with his brand is he will do, um, you'll see kind of down here, he'll do uh, quotes and he'll do uh, things to kind of keep people motivated and inspired. And what's really cool about that is people will tag their agents in it and they'll tag their other friends in it too. So he's getting a lot of content and a lot of uh, audience building through his quotes and his motivational speaking as well. So that's really neat. Um, Angie over here, as I said, we're going to just show you some of these examples so you can kind of take a look at how we break down a profile from the very top to the last part of the caption and how you can brand it to yourself. Um, but Angie in here, she is so cute. You can see that she also has what Sarah was talking about, just the perfect bio. It's short, it's sweet, it's right to the point. You know exactly who she is. Um, and then in her highlights, you can see those greens and those blues used in it. And then in her profile, what I love about it is that she has a red and she has blue and she has green. And she just makes sure she has at least one of those colors throughout all of them to make sure it's still kind of the same brand. It doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be super defined or super, you have to wait for the perfect angle with the right color in it, you know? She's just trying to get that in there somewhere so you know it's her brand. Um, she's also sharing about her family. She's showing about Popeye. She's showing listing, showing a couple different things. Um, and Luis over here, he's really great. Um, and, and this is the thing that a lot of agents use is that they will only post high resolution photos, which is a fantastic way to go about it as well. Especially if you guys are already using, um, getting your homes photographed, having other things photographed, why not use them? You're, you know, you're paying for them anyways, you're using them anyways. Might as well use those high quality photos to make your account look really, really nice and really clean. Um, you'll see within his that he doesn't have these really pretty highlight covers. He just has basic covers that you'll see that they all have that light blue and the grays and the whites in it. And then you can see throughout all of his pictures he tries to tie that in somewhere, try to, tries to have that vibe in there somewhere. So it's still kind of a theme, still kind of a vibe. And what this does is when you are tied into your branding colors, even if you don't have a logo yet and you want to tie it into your brokerage colors or things like that, um, what it does is that these colors allow for trust, which is what we're doing within marketing, right? We're allowing them to trust our message, trust how we are presenting ourselves, trust how we're going about it. So this is, this is kind of the route that we're going within it. 
I have a quick question. Yes, please. Okay, so you guys are going into into this branding, and I think a lot of us get hung up on branding when it comes to do I identify the ideal consumer that I want and try to envision what it is that they're going to respond to, or do I go from inward and decide what I'm about and then project that out? Because I think that's the the confusion, right? Yeah. Sarah, I'll let, I'll let you take that. That's a great question. Great question. <laughs> Absolutely. So like we started with before, this is all about showing who you are. Okay. So when you're thinking like, what are they going to like? What are they going to respond to? What are they? Da, 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 all that, that, all that, all those items. Really, this is reflecting who you are. This is building trust, getting people to like you, right? So that's where you really start is what do I want to show people who I am? You know, do I want to show people that I like to drink wine and hang out with my dog you know? <laughs> and real estate, of course. Um, you know, it's all about that showing who they are, showing who you are, so they like and trust you and hopefully um, list and sell with you. <laughs> uh, and there and there is an aspect of all this too, where even though you are building your community on social media, it is about your audience in so many ways. I mean, there's so many different ways to ask questions to your audience. Like, what do you want when you want to buy and sell a home? What is it that you're looking for in a real estate agent? I mean, there's so many great questions that you can ask to make sure that you are feeding your audience and that you're doing great, great gifts to them and that they have reason to want to follow you because they have... Um, uh, they're going to get a, a good value from following your account because you offer great things. So it's always great to ask questions to your audience. But kind of like what Sarah was saying in the, in the in the very beginning too is that it really is about marketing you and aligning with who you're going to align with. Because if you're if you're constantly trying to guess what people are going to like or what they're going to love, they might not end up aligning with you. And then they're you're, you're trying to meet them halfway somewhere, and it just it was never meant to work in the first place. You know what I mean? Um, so really kind of highlighting what, what you do and what you're about, whether that be, you know, high end real estate or whether that be, you know, uh, the, the rehab life, which is what we have over here, whatever that is, whatever your, your niche is to continue to push out your niche so that the right people can come and find you. Thank you. I, th I think that's the challenge, right? Is it's this fear of acceptance, right? If I, if I was to okay. shine my light, will they come right? And, and that fear that they don't come right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And you just have to dive into what, what you love. We have an agent that um, also has her yoga certification. So she posts a ton about real estate, a ton about yoga. Um, I know for a closing gift, she does one-on-ones with her clients, a one-on-one -on -one, like um, calming yoga session with them. And, you know, she's tying all these things in together. And those people that are like, oh my gosh, I do yoga every day. This, this girl is for me. You know, <laughs> that's, that's what, what, that's what you're bringing in. That's who you want to bring in. Those are who you want to work with. You don't want to work with somebody that's not aligned. And I know as agents, you all have had people where you're like, oh my gosh, this person is a nightmare. These clients are a nightmare. I wish I would have known. <laughs> Not saying that if you connect with somebody on all your three topics, it's going to be perfect and smooth. I mean, it's real estate. That's, that's, that's a beautiful dream. However, <laughs> you know, you're bringing down um, or bringing up the percentages of working with somebody that is like you. That won't be such a nightmare. Totally. Totally. And this is actually something that we're not even bringing into this, uh, this arena here, but just as you bring up this topic, this is just so valuable. You know, I think that that's some of the same fear that people have around doing video. Video is being asked all across the board. Um, every social media platform wants more video right now is being super highly ranked within the algorithm, but we get so nervous about like being recorded and people seeing us and are we going to mess it up? And how many times do we need to record it and all those different things too. And I think that that, that fear of being accepted or that fear of kind of shining that light out and maybe it not being um, reciprocated the right way is, is a big fear of it. But um, I think just kind of what Sarah was saying, just that co continual practice and the continual thought process that, you know, as an agent, you're designed to, to serve a certain amount of people. Um, and with that mindset that you know you're going to serve them, it's just about reaching reaching them um, kind of keeps us, at least keeps us motivated for sure. For sure. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say we're at the halfway mark of time. So just yeah. wanted to make sure that we're moving right along and also that I am keeping note of people's questions in the chat. So time permitting, we will get to them at the end, but just want to make sure that uh, you're aware we're at halfway of the webinar already. So thanks. You got it. You got it. Well, 
we'll, we'll uh, we just have a couple more of these guys here just to kind of um, put ourselves in these shoes and see how we can shine our light the best way possible. Sean, I just love how you put that. That was awesome. Yes. Um, right up top here, we have the rehab life. Um, and what's really great about them is that even though we're talking about aesthetics and everything branded and being totally perfect, they're about rehabbing stuff, right? So this is about literally showing a mess of what they're creating on there. And these pictures are not pretty looking, right? But they are obviously very successful and have done a great job because it's not just about what you're posting and how pretty it is. It's about your consistency and the message that you're bringing out to everybody else right so they have all of you know they have all of their posts over here on the left hand side and then for their highlights they just did a simple wood cover they didn't have to do anything fancy anything super creative just branded and simple and they're there themselves every single time that's what's most important um stylish detroit this is another great account they're using all high resolution photos lots of whites lots of really clean photos which is in right now and then they have um highlights that pop and that highlight them this is another great thing you can do in facebook if you want to do a really bright cover something like that and then keep the rest of your your content um, fairly neutral um, if you're like, Hey, Sophie and Sarah, I am never going to go in and brand myself with all these colors. I will never be the real estate agent who will be doing that. Don't worry. You don't have to, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. You don't have to, you don't Not have you. to, <laughs> this is just about once again, tailoring into you, right? This is so many different options and taking the strategy of branding and then pulling it into what makes the most sense for you. So we have Ian over here on our left-hand side. I just love his account. He's amazing. And he is actually one who has been really big within video, right? So he has blown up within video. If you get into video now, you're gonna be on the on the beginning end of it. Um, and really what he's doing with his branding is he makes sure that his face is almost in every single one of them. And that's his branding. His face is in all of them. That's his branding. I love that. Um, Joyce here in the center, um, she's baby boomer, which is awesome. So she um, is not a millennial going into social media, knowing everything about it. And she takes a really simple strategy as well, where she uses those high resolution photos that are not her, so she can take it and post them right away. Then all of her highlights are actually just her um, listed homes. So those are also high-end photos. They were taken by professionals and she's just showing what her current listings are and also gives reason to, also gives a reason for um, uh, followers to go back to her account because they want to see what her new listings are, right? So it's a great reason to want to have to go back and check out her account. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chad over here, similar thing. He doesn't have crazy highlights, doesn't have crazy stuff, but he always makes sure that there is water or sky somewhere in his photos and that's his theme throughout, right? And even if your other photos behind that are not the same, it's just the main photo having some type of a look that they know it's going to be you posting right away. Lots of different stuff. And we're going to go into more detail in our four-week course too of just how detailed we can get with it. So cool. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about farming. <laughs> uh, now, it's not just real estate. Okay, you guys. <laughs> um, when you're posting anything, it's awesome to put a location. I mean, it pops that algorithm up. Um, it does all these different things behind the scenes. So don't forget to do that. Um, let me see, mix it up. Don't be a robot. Sophia's going to talk a lot about this when she talks about hashtags next. Um, and use your farming areas, um, taking stories. I'm going to have Sophia go into this a little bit and talk about how to do this with hashtags. It is awesome and definitely when you when you see a little thing at the bottom of your screen that has a little notebook thing um that's where you can write down different ideas on the worksheet that goes with this uh webinar so um get your pen and paper out or if you have this up in canva start taking notes sophie has a lot of great information right now these hashtags are so cool and these hashtags are going to do some of the work for you with your farming okay so this hashtag game is really fun once you kind of get the hang of it and it's going to help as i said your post work for you so um we're going to talk a little bit about um instagram first here because it'll kind of help us make sense into the rest of it on instagram on every single post you're allowed up to 30 hashtags on every single post that's a lot right and every time that you add a hashtag to your post you get entered into that category or that hashtag right so if i were to click on that hashtag on my post i could see all the other people who have posted into that hashtag super duper cool it's actually the second way to be found on instagram is through hashtags amazing wow. and facebook is right behind it along with twitter and everyone else right so these hashtag strategies you can use on any platform regardless um, but with instagram if you use more than 30 then it cuts off your caption so make sure you only do 30. if you are looking to be found by more people on 
on Instagram. You want to try to do between 20 to 30 hashtags every single post. Okay. That sounds like a lot, but we're going to break down how to get to those 20 or 30. So don't freak out about that. <laughs> on Facebook, you want to try to do between one to 10. And the reason for this is people tend to get a little bit more overwhelmed with hashtags on Facebook at this time. Okay. So if you tend to do more than 10, people get a little overwhelmed with it. If you keep it within that 10, you're going to be probably more found within those categories. Okay. Um, we have this both on locations and on hashtags. It's about mixing it up and not being a robot. If you're using the same 22 hashtags, every single post or using the same location, every single post, the algorithm is going to start to kick you out. They're going to start to think that you're spamming it and that you're not giving and providing good content for their community, right? They're growing their community online, just like you're growing your own community on there as well. So you want to make sure that you're mixing it up. Don't do just 20 every time, do 22, do 28, do 30. You want to kind of mix it up, right? And not the exact same hashtags, right? If you're posting about a home that just sold, you don't want to post, you know, just listed on there. You want to make sure it's relevant to that post. That's when, that's when, that's what's to give you the most of it on there. Um, with those locations, same thing. You don't want to do the same location every time. What I like to do, and this is great to write down in your uh, in your worksheet there as well, is write down your farming locations. Write down kind of the area that you want to farm in. Because you can also, even if you're just mixing between three locations, that's fantastic. You're kind of just uh, highlighting posts within that area and starting to farm online. Because people can find you by location on social media, which is so cool. There's a ton of hashtags. There's tons of hashtags within real estate. And if you're like, which categories? or hashtags should I be entering into? Here's a good rule of thumb. You wanna look for hashtags that have more than 10,000 posts in them and ones that have less than 8 million, okay? This sounds very specific. And as I said, take, take what serves and what works for you, but here's why you wanna do it, okay? If you have more than 10,000 posts within a hashtag, that means that you have people who are actually following it, okay? So if people are following it, that means that yours might pop up and, and you might be shown. If you're going to do a hashtag that has more than 8 million in it, you're probably not going to be shown, right? If you have tons and tons and tons and tons of um, posts within this one hashtag, most likely just the really big top accounts, the ones who already have 10,000 followers and who already get, you know, 300 likes per post, those are the posts that are going to show within those categories, not necessarily you who are just starting a brand new account and just going into it, right? So if you want to go between 10,000 and 8 million, you're more likely to be seen and followed within the, that look. So really, really awesome. Um, both with Facebook and with Instagram, you can actually use your hashtags and your stories as well. So that those 24 hour stories that you guys have all seen, you can enter into categories in there as well. You just want to be really thoughtful and make sure that it still looks kind of pretty. Um, the algorithm, as I said, it is all about aesthetics on there. So if you have this beautiful video of this back patio that you're showing off the back of a home, and then you have this hashtag just all the way across it. It's going to kind of deduct you some points because it doesn't look very pretty and they don't want a ton of people to see it, right? Once again, you're adding to their community. So they want to make sure it looks good. It looks really nice. And if it looks nice, then they're going to highlight you and show you off to a bunch of people, right? Really, really cool. So um, yeah, as I said, those 20 to 30 hashtags, it seems a little bit overwhelming, but Sarah's going to break down um, what, how to uh, meet that 20 to 30 hashtag quota if you can. Absolutely. So we always have a little check sheet. When you are posting something, make sure it's branded. Now, when I say branded, it can be branded to you, your own hashtag, and we'll go through this on the Close Pro course, um, but branded, is it branded to your brokerage? Is it branded to you? Do you have a real estate team? You know, those are all things right there that is it branded, okay? industry? Are you branding for real estate, just listed, just closed? Um, you know, that, those sort of things. Wednesday walkthrough, anything like that. Is, is, is that branded to your industry or to your other topics? Okay, keep that in mind. Local, are you are you posting, let's say, hashtag Denver, I love Denver listings, or Chicago, Chicago residential, or whatever it might be. That's that's another couple local things you can check off. Hyper local. Are you in a specific neighborhood, subdivision, area of town? Just things like that. So right there, I mean, you can have three for each of those. So three times four is 12. So you have 12 hashtags right there and easy. So keep this in the back of your mind when you're thinking of hashtags. Am I branded for myself and my brokerage um, industry hashtags? Is it local and is it hyper local? Really zoning in and honing in on those areas. Love it. 
So let's talk a little bit more about local and hyperlocal because this is really kind of the farming nuggets that I think are going to really work for you in your post, right? And what that really means is that, you know, we're not just doing hashtag just listed hashtag for sale. Um, we are looking at actually specifying the city that we're in. Like Sarah said, we can go all the way down to hyperlocal and go down to our main street, go down to our school district, go down to our zip code and really pair it in. So if someone's looking within our area, we're showing that we're the expert within that neighborhood. We're the expert within that zip code, which is I mean, all the more better, right? Especially if you're looking at all these different agents online, what makes you special, what makes you different? It's 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 your expert knowledge within your area, right? Um, so the way to do this is you'll kind of see some examples over here on the right-hand side where it says your city homes for sale. So we're using Colorado Springs down here because we love Colorado Springs, um, but Colorado Springs homes for sale or Colorado Springs real estate. Um, those are the kind of things that you want to look for to start kind of helping yourself farm within your post, right? So you're going to use your location, tag your location with where you're talking about, and then use the hashtags relevant to that area. Um, another great way to go about this as well is if you are thinking of um, local mom and pop shops, maybe a really famous pizza place around the corner, things like that as well. Don't be afraid to tag to tag them or use their hashtags as well because you're showing that you are a community member building your community within that area all the same time, right? Really helpful. Feel free to write these down. There should also be a little bit of an area on your worksheet as well. If you love some of these, take them, run with it, use it everywhere. <laughs> really cool. Um. <sighs> yes, yes, love this one. <laughs> so obviously you may feel overwhelmed right now, <laughs> you know, um, we really want to tell you that social media is kind of a full-time job. It's a beast on its own. So if you're going through this and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm lost. I can't do any of this. I can't post every day, five times a day and have active stories and da, 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 da. Yes. <laughs> We get it. We have some, we have some information for you oh, to calm yourself. Okay. So now that social media that is, <laughs> that, you know, is kind of a thing on its own. I mean, it is a full-time job. That's why people like Sophie and I are in business. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. But um, consistency, there's that word again, consistency is key. So I want to rest your heart and say, if you are a two time a week poster, this is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, wherever, whatever platform you're on. If you post two times a week and you are consistent with posting two times a week, the algorithm notices this. The algorithm likes this. Okay. It's showing that, Hey, okay. They are a two time a week poster awesome. We're going to show their stuff. That's where they're comfortable. We're going to, we're going to congratulate them. We're going to reward them for being consistent. Now, if you're, if you're posting 20 times one week and the next week you're posting one or two, the week after that, if you're all over the place, the algorithm gets confused and it doesn't like being confused. <laughs> so then it's going to start pulling back all of your stuff. So please remember that. So when you're looking going, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Yes, you can. If you post one time a week, okay? One time a week, stick with that and one platform, okay? You don't have to be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, da, 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 all the things. Um, TikTok, of course, that's another big one right now. Of course, conquer one at a time. If you can say, I can post on Facebook, two times a week consistently, awesome. If you can do that, perfect, you got it. Then you can move over and do the same on Instagram or move over and do the same on TikTok or whatever you're doing. It's being consistent. Hit one at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself because this is supposed to be fun, okay? Yes. We're, we're not the traditional social media experts, you know, where we're telling you to, to add every single thing and, and do all the stuff. This is really about creating a plan that's going to work for you. We're, we're here to share with you guys, you know, the analytics behind stuff and, and, and what the platform's like and, and all the great strategies behind it. But really, it's about formulating something that's going to work for you long term, right? And as Sarah says, if that's one platform twice a week, then you're going to be the very best at it twice a week. Yes, <laughs> yes on that one platform. Yes. Um, and with the strategy stuff that Sarah was saying too, it's all about consistency. And if you're going through this class, you're like, wow, I still don't know my three topics. I'm not ready for all this branding stuff. I'm not ready to dive into all this. I want to take, especially the four-week course to know exactly how to do everything. Here are some great things that you can start with today to be consistent. Yes. You can just start this on your profile literally today and just do this yeah. as 
consistency for the next however long you want to. So um, some of our favorite ones in here, Sarah, I'll let you share some of the favorite ones too. Some of, one of my favorite, favorite ones is Mindful and Motivation Monday, just because I love, I love mm -hmm. those vibes. And then of course, when it Wednesday, because I mean, it, whether it's a win for you or you're shouting at your brokerage or another agent or anything, yeah. I mean, when it Wednesdays, I think are just a fantastic give and a great build for the community in general. Absolutely. And keep in mind, this doesn't have to be all real estate um, encompassing. If your motivation Monday, if it's just general motivation or win it Wednesday and you're going, guess what I did? I made my bed today. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I mean, it can be something as simple as that. You know, it's getting people to know you. Um, Tuesday tunes. I love that. What are you listening to? And then this gives a, this gives um, an opportunity to ask your audience. Okay. I'm listening to this new band. They're fantastic. You're tagging them. Ha ha. And then you're asking your audience, Hey, who are you listening? today who are you listening to on your tuesday tunes you know i need some new listening material people love to give information right like oh i need a new chiropractor who do you know your feed will blow up because people want to give you information right so all of this stuff see how you can tie it into your three topics and real estate of course fact friday tip tuesday all this stuff wolf wednesday that's a really great one too um but Think about that. And again, this is a worksheet um, that you guys can take home with you. I know Becky put it in the uh, comments there. So if you have nothing, if you are totally lost, start here, Monday. What's your Monday memory? It could be a home you sold two years ago. It could be um, something with your family. It does not matter. Tomorrow, hey, what, what's that good news twos, baby? <laughs> What's the weather? I mean, it can be good news too. Hey, it's going to be 85 degrees, whatever it is. It can be short, sweet, and concise. Love it. <laughs> you know, I had an aha on your last slide that yeah. I think one of the misconceptions we make is that we want our hashtags to be unique. But what I'm hearing is we actually don't. We want them to be something that's already being shared. Yes. And when it comes to you, when you comes to your own branding and your specific um, hashtag, you do want to be unique to you because you're going to have both yourself and your clients pouring into that hashtag and adding to your community on there. But when you're going to marketing yourself and expanding your reach, you want to use ones that are already being used so that you can dive in there and be a part of be a part of the trend. So it's a great combination of both because you want to take your own hashtag, your brokerage, your independent, you know, your, your team, your independent uh, real estate, you know, under your brokerage, you want to get lots of people on that. So when you get started, there's not going to be, so you're going to have a combination of low and high um, hashtags. I love that. Yeah. This is just something this is just something silly that we say all the time is that we we feel like marketing shouldn't feel like marketing and that means for you as well it shouldn't have to feel like this entire full-time job it shouldn't have to feel like all this craziness and so our goal over these next you know four weeks is really to help break that down so it doesn't feel like a full-time job and it feels fun and a part of your everyday work that you're already doing and loving all the time um yeah super excited to go into this four-week course um, and with this four week course, just alone within what we are doing within, you know, just the social media boot camp here. Of course, we're going to go through your account setup. Make sure you're actually set up for success. This is going over, you know, your handles and your page names. And if you're a business account or a personal account, I mean, we're going way into it to make sure that you're even set up for success to begin with. Um, we're going to talk about um, advertisements. We're going to talk about Facebook and Instagram advertising, which I know is super interesting topic right now that are, is really fascinating. Um, we're going to talk even more so about branding and consistency and really to the depth of how you can do that super duper easy um, and not make it stressful or overwhelming and have everything look and be branded to you in a good way, including captions, all that good jazz. Um, stories and highlights, this is huge, both on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. How do we make our stories look really good and really professional and help it work for us? Um, cultivating your community, we're gonna hear that throughout the all four weeks in so many different ways, but by the end of it, you're gonna be ready to really lead a community um, through your real estate business, which is just amazing. Just 
wonderful things. Um, engagement tactics, we're going to go all the way down to how to run a contest and how to partner with other people and how to partner with other agents. And so all these great things of how you can engage with others and continue to grow your audience. Of course, step-by-step -step worksheets. And probably one of my favorite things that we're giving is 30 days worth of edible social media posts, right? So these are copy and paste, you know, captions, hashtags, um, the images that you can change and make your very own. I mean, this is just, it's, it's awesome for, for all this 30 days worth of edible social media posts. Oh my gosh. And what's crazy is with this closed membership is this isn't all, this isn't even it. This, is, <laughs> this isn't even it. I mean, Sean, I believe you have some courses on there too. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, but before we jump to that, go back really quick. Yeah. Because, okay, no, go to the One other slide. The yeah. slide, the slide. <laughs> so, so give me an idea on my time commitment level for mm. your, because your four week <laughs> boot camp sounds great, but four weeks sounds like a lot of time. So what does my weekly commitment level look like? Cause I'm, I, I personally need this. I need help. <laughs> Anybody who follows me on social media will attest. I need help. Um, what is the time commitment? Sure. So the time commitment for the boot camp each each week we come out with a new one and they're anywhere from like 35 to 45 minutes each. And they are awesome. We have a ton of information. You will leave with so much usable, usable things to start immediately. And, you know, these 30 days of social media posts with the close with the close pro membership 30 days as you can see on the right side of the screen here um it's everything from hey what are sellers tips this and that we give you or the close pro gives you the actual graphic they tell you what to say like you don't even have to come up with what to say and the hashtag research done and you can add your own stuff in there. You can you can add your hashtag for your brokerage or for your team or whatever you're doing and start um, start using that little checklist of local. Is it branded? Is it hyper local? You can add those in. So and that's all with Close Pro. You get 30 of these. So is the yeah. so the course is it's recorded and so it's yeah. available. It's released once a week. Correct. You got it. Yeah. And so, so if it's released on Monday and I'm busy on Monday, I can watch it on Tuesday or Wednesday. And then my goal is to kind of get that homework piece done. And then when the next course is released, then I'll be ready. But if I get behind a week, it's not the end of the world. It's like, I can kind of go at my own pace. That's Absolutely. correct. Absolutely. You go at your own pace and and most of the worksheets are all made to really be fill that you can fill them out while we're in the class together um, and of course you can always take time afterwards to be super thoughtful and you know ask yourself different questions and dive into as much as you want but really it's designed that you can walk away that day with actual items that you can start using on your social media got it wonderful pretty cool and, um, just so i everyone's clear on the closed pro and it's, it's maybe a 45 minute commitment a week but you get all this you know extra stuff um, I believe it's normally $2.99 for the year. I'm about to chat out a discount that takes $100 off. So you would actually get all of this for $199 for the year and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to get into as well. Um, and then I'm hoping that we can breeze through that in the next four or five minutes and then try to get it to yeah. a Q&A because we definitely have some people who have some questions in the chat that have been going on throughout the webinar. Yeah, you guys did a great job. What a great presentation. And so the Close Pro, what it is, is it is where the Close puts all of their resources. So if you're an avid reader of the Close and you see the templates that are available and the scripts that are available and some of the other courses that we promoted in the past and webinars that we reported and we've, we've recorded in the past, the Close Pro is where we store it all. And as you just heard, you're getting a hundred dollar off discount today and bringing the cost down to $199 for the entire year. Now you can pay monthly if you want to, it's $35 a month. So if you don't trust 199 bucks, you could sign up for one month for 35 bucks. And then, and then if you don't like it, you can back out and, and, and no, no harm. You could download everything and you could have it all for 35 bucks. <laughs> Now we prefer it if you sign up and you're with us for the year and you participate. But some of the courses that are available on there are four low cost hitting, hidden listing resources. That was a webinar that I just recorded recently. Um, so there's four um, courses there. 
six simple systems to transform your real estate career. So I know a lot of you on here are newer, right, to real estate. And so Chris Linzel, one of our co-coaches, um, has recorded a really great series of classes for newer agents. And um, like we said, 50 plus downloadable resources, how to generate leads to build a long-term business, Instagram and Facebook crash course that you're going to get today and, mm -hmm. uh, and the 30 days of social media posts. So you don't have to get hung up on what am I going to post? Cause that's where my head goes. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, so what a great value. What a great value. And we have thousands of hours invested into the close pro. And I think that you're going to really enjoy the content that's available. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. So as we shared in the link, if you want to share that one more time, um, Becky, and just put it in there one more time um, for those people that are interested in joining, and then we'll spend the rest of the time on some Q and A. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Wow. And I just want to also call out that the discount's good for a couple of days. We don't normally make the price this low on the website even. So you really can only get this hundred dollar off through using code social um, or the link that I just chatted into the chat. Um, and it's only gonna be available like that for a couple of days, just because this is something that we do for our webinar attendees. You've already invested your time. If this is something that you really feel like you wanna go that extra mile with and um, devote more of your, invest more of your time and energy into farming your area and social media, this course is going to go into everything from how to set up your account to and beyond. Um, <sighs> So really it's going to cover the basics. It's going to yeah. cover the basics. Basics. Yeah. And then by the end of it, you won't even be at the basic level anymore. You'll be a lot more. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited. Um, uh, I'm going to go through some questions here. And I just want to shout out to Michelle in the chat who called out that the head of Instagram said that Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app and will be leaning more into entertainment and video. Um, we'll also call this out. One of our upcoming courses is off for the close pro is going to be about video marketing. So thank you, Michelle, for calling that out. A lot of what we're covering in this course is the basics of social media. But the cool thing is when you subscribe to the close pro, um, you uh, get all of our new courses, which we're always adding. So uh, good call out, Michelle, that the head of Instagram literally said they're no longer just a sh photo sharing app. They're feeling the heat from TikTok and they're doing more video <laughs> themselves. Um, so we're gonna be doing a video marketing course. If you sign up with the Close Pro, you will get access to that one when we launch it. Um, so thank you so much, very astute comment. Um, I have one question here from Brittany. Um, our team is in Ottawa, Canada. Does the algorithm for Instagram work similarly for the same in, in Canada? So don't know if there's any differences or if you, you Sophie and Sarah can speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can apply these same topics no matter where you are in the world. Um, you can still use the same farming tactics. You can still use the same location tactics, um, as well as the three, you know, the three categories. Um, it's going to definitely work for all areas. Um, actually, Canada has some fantastic analytics for farming and for um, connecting with their and connecting with their database and with their area. So um, all, all more power to you. I'm excited to see where you guys grow because Canada absolutely can apply these exact same strategies. Amazing. Um, I have one question here from Sage. I do marketing for a real estate company. How would you find three topics for a company? So like, let's say you're posting not as a person, but as a company, what's your suggestion there? Absolutely. So when you're looking at a whole company, obviously real estate is number one. Um, agents, number two, and then also a bunch of the just listed, the just sold, um, and then also a community outreach. A lot of these larger brokerages and companies um, and teams have a really big thing with giving back and they're doing client appreciation. They're doing pop buys every month. They're being consistent in that sort of thing. So think about that. Um, agents are a whole nother, another thing. We work with a lot of agents where we're like, hey, give us five awesome facts about everybody on your team or everyone at your brokerage. And then we do a thing where we say, guess who got kicked out of a Taco Bell drive-through? 
And then, you know, there's four people that you get to pick from and that brings your engagement up. So it doesn't have to be so real estate specific on real estate agents or, you know, the fun facts or where they're from, anything like that. So those are a few little options for you. That's great. Um, we had a couple questions around this and I know this is something that you go over in the Close Pro course more at length, um, but would love to hear your perspective on like, in, um, this is true on Facebook and Instagram, the um, benefits and downsides of having a business account or a personal account. And if you are like hard lines, like you know, yes, or, or what's your perspective on that? Yes. Um, so the big thing between a personal account and a business account, they're going to differ a little bit between Instagram and Facebook mostly. So I'll talk about Facebook and it, um, and then Instagram can be covered by Sophia. So Facebook, what is a little frustrating about Facebook is that you have to have a personal account to start your business account. Okay. Um, and then once you start your business account, you have to invite people to get to your business account. And some people just won't do it, right? So what we tell people is if you have your personal account and your business account and you're posting, post on both of them. But here's a little tip. Don't share from my personal to my business or vice versa. Post separately um, because the algorithm likes that. The algorithm isn't going to share as much if you're sharing between accounts. So make it its own post every time. It can be the exact same thing, okay? Um, just make sure you're posting it separately on your personal and your business. Another thing with Facebook is if you want to run ads for leads, for recognition, whatever it might be, you have to do it from a business account. You can't do it from a personal account. So just a little something to think about. And yes, it's frustrating. <laughs> we get it. But if you're going to run ads, that's the biggest, biggest part of having a business account on Facebook. That's yeah. Funny. That, and that's a good point. So just to be clear, like if you want to run ads, you need a business account. Uh, and then also if you, if you, uh, want a business account, you need a personal account. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> you need a personal account. Um, so I think it sounds like, you know, knowing what the upside and the downside is for each and deciding what, what works best for you would maybe, is that your recommendation then? Know it, but knowing the pros and the cons. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you're always going to have more followers on your personal account. It's just how it goes. People get very frustrated with that. But, you know, step in, live it. You know, your personal account also should have those three topics as well. So, um, yeah. And if you're if you get stumped on your three topics, go to your personal accounts and see what you're posting most about. It's like a great little tip that you can already access. <laughs> so if you're posting a lot about drinking wine and hanging out with dogs, like, hey, there's your other topics. <laughs> I love that. Sophia, do you want to talk about Instagram? Sure, sure. And on Instagram, it's very similar to where, where, you know, unfortunately, if you do want to run ads or you want to do any kind of lead promotions, you do need a business account on there. Um, but what I love about Instagram is that you don't have to have a personal account and a business account. If you want to just have one account on Instagram, you can change it right on over to business, which is so awesome. And what I love about the business side of Instagram is that it actually gives you something called insights. And so insights are going to be your analytics of what's going on within every post. So of course, uh, an overall scope of your whole account and how it's doing and maybe which audiences that you are gravitating towards and what times of day and what days are doing best for you. So you can see all that data, but then it even tells you on every single post that you do, how many people viewed it, how many people liked it, how many people engaged with it. I mean, it's just amazing. And then you can kind of take your social, social media strategy and apply it to any platform with that as well. So there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, and if you have a personal account, you can switch it over to a business without having to do all these crazy things on Instagram. So we will in, in the four week course kind of cover this in more depth too, of just, you know, what the benefits, the pros and cons are of both um, business and personal for both Instagram and Facebook. Um, but I tend to, I think I tend to lead a little bit towards business for Instagram, just because you get those really neat insights. Yeah. That's really cool. We're, we're already two minutes over, but if you guys are okay with it, I, two more questions and then we could start to wrap it up. If it's bring it on the time. Um, and thank you for everyone who's staying over and asking your questions. You. Um, so one woman, Lisa said, I'm a, uh, 
a bit of an older agent, what are your recommendations for Instagram? I think a lot of, you know, people who might be a little older in age might feel intimidated by getting just sure. now started on Instagram. So if you have any suggestions, um, would love to hear them. Um, actually, one of my favorite things, and we can run back to the slide as well, um, is I would follow our friend Joyce. Let me see if I can run this back to her. I would follow other agents within the industry who are already doing what you do, because there are so many agents in every age group already doing this, right? And I think the biggest fear is putting ourselves out there online. Joyce right here, you can follow her if you like. Um, would be to follow people and other agents who are doing already what you're doing, because then you're going to see how they're doing it and how you want to present yourself to the world. I think no matter which platform you start on, it's always, it always makes you a little bit nervous in general, right? Just anything new makes us nervous, right? Um, and so I think especially within those four-week courses, one, you get to do it with us and you get to do it, um, we all get to kind of do it together and, and kind of game plan together. Um, but then also as you look at other agents, you know, like she's doing, she doesn't take any of her own photos, right? She's not taking a picture in her kitchen and doing a selfie with her daughters or anything. She's not doing any that kind of stuff she is using professional photos that she gets emailed to her and she uses them on her social media so all of these highlights up here are her list are her just listed homes that are available and then all of these photos down here are professional high quality photos that she has access to within her name so um the way that i would look at it is that you don't have to fit you don't have to feel like you have to fit yourself into this box of Instagram or into their square box, um, but to really make it work for you, what's going to make you most comfortable? Is that photos of your family? Is that just professional photos of your listings? Whatever that looks like, um, I would recommend following others, um, maybe within the same age group or within the same um, the same line of work doing that. And that will kind of just give a little bit of encouragement and to know that you're not alone, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's so true at this point. I think there's over a billion people on Instagram. So it's not just the people you might have thought of five years ago. Um, yeah, definitely, my, my dad's 77, he's on Instagram. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And he's following people he knows. So I don't think uh, you need to be intimidated um, at all. Um, and so just, we have a couple questions about the Close Pro I'm gonna answer. Uh, I chatted out the link and yes, when you sign up, that does take a hundred dollars a year off. It does the date. So let's say you sign up today, then you would have a membership until September 20th, 2022. We do have monthly payments. This hundred dollar off is not part of that. I will chat out the closed pro landing page um, just so that you can get that in case you want to go the monthly route. Um, I'm also chatting out uh, to everyone, uh, the follow the clothes on Instagram, just like, hey, we're here, like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> clothes also is on Instagram, follow us. Um, we're getting a lot of thank yous, a lot of like, this was great. I have one more question um, before we kind of wrap it up. But if you have more questions, please write to hi at the clothes.com. I, Becky, personally respond to all the emails there. And if there is something that you did not get the answer to about the clothes pro or just in general, I always route it to the writer, or the clothes pro instructor, who's the best person to answer. And so we're really responsive in that way. Um, so, but yeah, I think this was great. I have one more question from Max. When post, uh, so when posting, do you recommend posting like uh, how, in, you know, when you post on Instagram, it can post directly to Facebook. Do you recommend people do that? Or do you think that you should, when you, so I think the question is clear, but in case people don't know, when you post on Instagram, there's an option that that post can get pushed over to Facebook versus you going into facebook.com and making a post on your own. Um, do you recommend people do that where they push an Instagram post over to Facebook? Sarah, I'll let you, if you want to. <laughs> So, of course, every social media platform is, um, they want you on their platform, even though they're owned by some of the same companies, <laughs> which I know, I know. However, they want, they want your attention and your time on their own platform. All right. So, yes, you can share it. If you are crunched for time, go ahead and share it. It's not going to totally kill your algorithm, anything like that. What you can do, what, what we advise you to do, that's that the algorithm them likes more is to post the exact same thing, but going into Instagram and doing it, then going into Facebook and doing it as new posts every time. Um, algorithm likes it better, but hey, if you want to use that feature, because hey, 
I'm not, I, I don't have a million, a million minutes a day to be spending on social media, go for it. It's fine. It's not going to ruin your life. But if you're really going to jump into the Instagram and Facebook game, I, we just suggest that you do it separately. But again, not going to kill your algorithm. <laughs> That's a really good answer. Um, thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm going to type out hi at the close.com. Just shout it out. You can email me. That's where I'm at. If your questions didn't get answered, just want to be conscious of everyone's time. We're already a little bit over. Um, but so many of these topics we do go over in the closed pro. So um, if you sign up with that code, uh, you'll get $100 off. And we have tons of other great courses. And sometimes we do live small group training, um, lots of good stuff there. Um, uh, you can write to hi at the close.com. I'll answer that. And I just like, it looked like Sean had to bounce off because we're over. So I will uh, be presenter here when I say, um, yes, Sarah and Sophia, I learned so much. Um, I'm back. I'm back. I bounced back oh. in. Oh, you are back. Oh, I bounced hi. down. I bounced back. Yeah, you bounced back. I was doing the closing remarks. So I don't know. It was know good. You, I was listening. You were doing awesome. Okay. <laughs> you don't I need me. There, so I thought you left. Uh, Sean, if you want to do closing remarks while an alarm is going off in the background here. Yeah, I'm just going to say that um, I thought the two of you were outstanding. I love your personalities. Uh, you guys are super engaging. I'm excited about learning from you. So I'm planning <laughs> on joining and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to get back. I'm going to step up my social media game. <laughs> I'm going to participate with you guys. So I, I look forward to it for the rest of you. Um, join us on the, the Close Pro. Um, you're going to get a lot of great okay. recordings, a lot of specific, super specific techniques about how to lead generate, um, how to, if you're in a market that's shifting or maybe a little unstable, how to, um, how to navigate that market. I have a whole course in there, 13 videos on how to navigate a course in a shifting market. So if you're in that kind of market, um, there might be a great opportunity there. I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sarah and Sophia, you guys were amazing. You were amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. We hope to see everybody um, coming up here at the Close Pro membership. And then I have a feeling you'll be seeing more of us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Take that as a threat. Yeah. <laughs>